Welcome to the Aging Adventure on KFOR. Happy New Year, everybody. If you joined us in 2021 for these Saturday morning conversations brought to you by the caring professionals at the Legacy Retirement Communities, thank you very much. Every week we focused on important matters in the year facing seniors. If you just discovered the show, we're glad you found us. I'm Dale Johnson, joined by John Kapetsky of Legacy Terrace and longtime friend of Lincoln Seniors, Kathy Blythe. Good morning and Happy New Year again, John and Kathy. Good morning. Good morning, Dale. Happy New Year to you. We invest our time talking with people who care about seniors and the life they deserve during retirement. Coming up a bit later on the show, we reach out to Dr. Nicole Akers about preventative care and proactive planning. That's coming up on the Aging Adventure after Kara. Karen O'Hara with Aging Partners, joining John and Kathy to talk about taking care of your health through fitness. Karen, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. So this is the time of the year when all you see on television, it seems like, are weight loss plans and gym mem- uh, gym memberships being offered. And I know that uh, Aging Partners has a pretty outstanding uh, health and wellness program. Can you talk to us about that? Yeah, our health and uh, fitness center, we have a health and fitness center at um, 555 South 9th Street on the corner of 9th and J Street, um, where we have a variety of different cardio and strength equipment. We also have a number of different programs out in the community, fitness classes, health screenings, foot uh, care clinics. We offer mental health programs and um, just a bunch of different programs for people's mental and physical health. Who can take advantage of those services? So anyone can access our services. We do have different um, requirements as far as fees. People under the age of 60 do have a required fee for using our services. For people 60 and over and caregivers of any age, we just ask for a suggested contribution, but there is no required fee. So are there, uh, do you just make that, that uh, payment monthly or, or annually, or how does that work? Okay, so there is no contract to contractual obligation or any annual fees. Um, We just have a $15 a month required um, fee for people under the age of 60 to use our fitness center, Um, but they can do that month to month and they don't have to continue going. They can just go for one month at a time. Um, For people over the age of 60 and caregivers of any age, we we do encourage a $10 a month contribution, but we do not require it. So it's, uh, and some of our other classes and health screenings have different uh, contributions that we request. So what is all is included in that uh, either 10 or $15 per month? So our fitness center has strength equipment, uh, many different types of cardio equipment and uh, um, various other machines for stretching and um, just a bunch of different stuff. We have personal trainers available by appointment only for no additional charge um, so that we definitely have if people are not sure how to use the strength equipment, we can have people come in and design an exercise program that works for them. And some of the classes, well, all, I should say all of the classes that you have as an outreach in the community are so popular. People love getting the new list of classes that's coming up from Aging Partners Health and Fitness. Uh, talk about those a little bit, Karen. Yeah, so Aging Partners offers fitness classes and other types of classes throughout the community, not just at the fitness center. We offer evidence-based Tai Chi, which is proven to prevent falls, as well as other falls prevention programs, a class we have called Stepping On, which is also a falls prevention. We have evidence-based programs in diabetes self-management. And then we have a number of just fitness classes, fun different things. We have Qigong, we have Dance for Life, Chair Yoga, Movement and Strength, and a whole bunch of others. And then for those classes, there's a $4 $4 weekly suggested contribution for people over the age of 60 and a required fee of $5 a week for people under the age of 60. So please call 402-441-7575 for more information. Are there virtual options available uh, for some of those classes? There are. We, have, um, we do have a limited number of classes available via Zoom. And again, those classes can vary. Um, Sometimes we offer um, more, we offer them quarterly. So call 402-441-7575 to get the most updated information. What kinds of modifications are you having to uh, make right now because of COVID, Karen? Um, For our fitness center, we do have to have our appointment only. So people do have to call for an appointment to get to the fitness center. Normally we're open eight to four, Monday through Friday, but now people do have to call and make an appointment. 
Karen, before we let you go, we know that the foot clinics you have at Aging Partners Health and Fitness are very popular. Can you talk about those before we go? Yes, we have uh, many clinics throughout the city. Um, we offer foot care, including toenail trims. We have them at week, on a weekly basis at different locations. We have um, health screening, bone density, blood pressure, that sort of thing. Um, we do request a suggested contribution of $20 for these services. Please call 402-441-7575 to set an appointment. Karen, thank you so much for, for all this great information. I know Aging Partners is an absolute treasure for our community, providing so many great services to seniors and, and the health and wellness services are, are just one, one of the great parts of, of the total package of services. So thank you for all you do for our seniors. Thank you very much for having me. Coming up next, the benefits of preventative care and proactive planning when the aging adventure continues. back on the aging adventure brought to you by the legacy retirement communities i'm dale johnson with john and kathy our conversation turns to preventative care and proactive planning for seniors for answers to our questions we bring in wahoo physician dr nicole Akers. Hi, Dr. Akers. So nice to have you with us today. We're going to cut right to the chase here and have you tell us what the annual Medicare wellness exam is all about, what it is and what it isn't, because this is so confusing. Yes. Well, so thank you so much for having me. So the Medicare annual wellness examination is a preventative visit that someone that has Medicare insurance is able to schedule with their primary care physician. The goal of this visit is to help a patient identify any gaps in their medical care, answer any questions, and basically try to keep them as healthy as possible moving forward. And so this is recommended once a year, and this is separate from your annual physical exam. So correct, there is some confusion regarding how this compares to your annual physical. Once you have Medicare insurance, they will cover a free once a year medical annual preventative examination, which is what I am discussing that focuses solely on preventative care. The annual physical that we are all used to receiving when we were younger actually is not a covered service with Medicare most of the time. It depends on your supplemental insurance. So it is a little bit different that the goal of this visit is to target key gaps in your medical care, such as routine screening that you might be eligible for, such as lab work, imaging, those sorts of things depending on your risks so that we can keep you as healthy as possible. So it's a it's a free visit doesn't doesn't cost anybody anything um, for you for you to go take advantage. Have have there been situations where you've in this Medicare visit, you've actually uncovered some some serious stuff? Certainly the Medicare annual wellness exam, since it is trying to focus on preventative care, I have found problems on a mammogram or through a recommended routine colonoscopy that then ends up helping to potentially save that person's life. So the exam itself, the Medicare wellness exam, Nicole, there isn't a lot of physical stuff that goes on. It's more talking about things, that is right? Exactly right. So the the Medicare wellness is more about discussing the person's risk factors for various medical conditions. 
Um, it's not so much focused on a head-to-toe physical like we may have been used to in the past with our yearly examination. One thing I know, uh, Nicole, and I've experienced this myself, is is you see many different physicians, uh, a cardiologist or perhaps an a oncologist or whatever, all, all the different specialties. And as we grow older, it seems like we're seeing more and more of those. Communication between all of them uh, and your primary care doctor can certainly be an issue sometimes. Can you talk about that? That is a struggle that we deal with in the medical world, especially with different electronic medical records across the board with different providers using different systems that don't communicate. So the best thing that you can do as a patient is when you do go and see a specialist is make sure that they fax a copy of their note to your primary care physician office. The primary care physician should be kind of the hub of coordination with all of the specialists. Um, the other important thing is always bring an updated list of your current medications. Yeah, I experienced that a few years ago where I had one doctor prescribing one medication, another prescribing another one, and it, it only came to light that maybe those would have negative interactions. It was my pharmacist who, who picked that out and called me and said, you may want to think about this because those in combination can cause a stroke, which I'm really not interested in having. So Yes, you are right. Our pharmacist colleagues do a great job of trying to help catch some of those errors. So at the Medicare wellness exam, when you do feel that there are some red flags that are showing up, how do you proceed? Do you contact the person's uh, other providers? Do you give them uh, a referral that they need to follow up on? How do you coordinate all that so that they it can be a continuum of care after they've had their Medicare wellness exam? So when I identify a red flag on the Medicare wellness examination, I will either order the appropriate test to investigate it further, or yes, I do make a referral to the appropriate specialist to then pass along the care to them. What are some of the milestone medical tests that seniors should be getting done as we age? I say we. And how often are these tests recommended based on an individual's age? So it does depend a little bit on sex. So for women, we recommend, recommend mammogram screening up until age 75, pap smears up until age 65, depending on risk factors, colonoscopy for both men and women up until age 75 routinely. Um, and then after that, there are some various immunizations um, that we will discuss, such as shingles. Um, we also will discuss influenza immunization, those sorts of things. Um, women also do qualify for a bone density scan after their menopausal to, to identify osteoporosis. And that's important to identify because we can intervene to help prevent the woman's risk of a broken bone if she were to have a fall. So many different uh, tests that should be taken care of and, and uh, it can be confusing sometimes and it might be easy to miss one. So that's a great benefit of the Medicare uh, wellness visit. We have more to discuss with Dr. Nicole Akers from the Saunders Medical Center in Oahu, and we'll talk more with her after this break on The Aging Adventure on KFOR. Morning on the Aging Adventure, brought to you by the Legacy Retirement Communities. We continue the wellness conversation with Wahoo physician Dr. Nicole Akers. Dr. Akers, advanced care planning is a huge topic, and that often doesn't get enough attention. Can you talk about more? Talk more about what advanced care planning is, the benefits, uh, the peace of mind that it can provide. 
I think this is a great topic to cover. Advanced care planning is a great opportunity for a patient to sit down with their spouse or their children or close loved ones to discuss what their goals of care are in life. It's an opportunity for them to discuss what kind of care that they would want at the end of life before we get to that crisis moment. And it allows everyone to be on the same page as far as what their care should entail as they near the end of life. So in a situation where there are no advanced directives, what, what are the, I mean, what, what's a, is there a typical situation how that would play out? Yes, if the patient is not able to make the decisions for themselves, it will typically go to their spouse if they are of sound mind to be able to make those decisions. And then if from there, it would go to adult children and be the next step. Which can often result in a big, big conflict within a family. It can, unfortunately. And so that's why having your goals of care listed out very clearly in your advanced care planning documentation helps to alleviate those concerns at the end of life and those arguments that can ensue. Dr. Akers, how does one determine when they should see a doctor and if they're not feeling well and when it's something we can take care of ourselves at home? Typically, in the past prior to COVID, I would say usually for the first five to seven days at home is um, providing supportive care with vitamin C, zinc, lots of hydration can really help to stimulate your immune system and you can recover well at home. In today's world, unfortunately, with COVID being around nearly two years now, if there is any concern that a patient has, I encourage them to reach out to their primary care physician's office, and then they can further help guide them as to if they need to get tested, if they need to come into the office, or if they can rest and recover at home. Through the explosion in COVID cases uh, through this winter, and, and this year is a little bit different than last winter in that we are seeing a, a number of influenza cases as well, where last year we had hardly any. How does one differentiate between COVID, influenza, just a garden variety, head cold? How, how do you make that differentiation? So the answer is it's very difficult to differentiate. There are some clues that I as a provider look for in the history, but I will tell you the long list of symptoms of COVID include runny nose, sore throat, congestion, fever, body aches, chills, um, you can have cough, shortness of breath, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. So you name it, it can really be related to COVID potentially. So if someone has at least two of those symptoms, I encourage them to get tested for COVID because I cannot differentiate just based on that history if it's a common cold virus, COVID, or influenza. So the best way to know for certain is to get tested. Do you have some recommendations uh, that would help all of us uh, as far as vitamin supplements, habits that we can help to be proactive about preserving our health, especially in the winter months? We need to have adequate sleep. So, I, you know, whatever that normal is for you, most people run on about eight hours of sleep, ideally, drinking plenty of water, exercising regularly. So 30 minutes, five days a week is the goal we should shoot for. And then supplementations, I think vitamin C is great to take. A probiotic will help with your gut health. And then a multivitamin on a daily basis. And we want to, again, give a big thumbs up to the importance of the annual Medicare wellness exam. Uh, and, and you helped us understand what it is and what it isn't. Are those also available, at least in some practices, via telehealth? I do believe that some practices are doing them via telehealth because like we discussed, it is more talking and discussing a patient's risk factors than a true physical examination. Well, we hope that people who find doctors to be scary now have found out that you're not scary at all, Dr. <laughs> Akers. You only want to help people. And we encourage people to be proactive and to get on top of things early. That can make all the difference and truly make all the difference in their health and well-being. Yes, thank you so much for having me. Yes, Dr. Akers, thank you so much for all you do to take care of the good folks in Saunders County and uh, to all of our doctors for, for the work in keeping us healthy and what really are some pretty scary times with COVID and now with uh, influenza cases over the winter. So thanks again for all that you do. Thank you. John, where do listeners go for more information about the legacy communities? You can check out our website, LegacyRetirement.com, or you can give us a call at 402-436-3000. We'd love to hear from you. And Kathy, have a good week. Join us every Saturday morning for The Aging Adventure, brought to you by the Legacy Retirement Communities. I'm Dale Johnson.